I want you to get together. Hello everyone. So I have an interesting one for you today and I'd like to thank At The Speed Of Shadow for sharing this one with me. He sent me an email where he was talking about a, uh, a video he's watching about giant owls in Canada. And uh, in the introduction they were talking about the symbology of the owl throughout history and they showed something very interesting. And as he uh, said to me in this email, uh, you won't miss it. So I checked out the video and what I saw was this. And he was talking about how uh, the Greek goddess Athena had her little owls. But if you look closely at this image, you'll notice something very strange on her chest. So I found the original artwork and had a closer look for myself. And what do you know? It appears to be a clown. And not just, you know a historical image of some monster, but I mean a, lit a literal modern day looking clown on her chest with its tongue sticking out. You know, you look at this thing here and I couldn't help but think back to uh, the modern day makeup we see in like this image here, you know, this line that we often see around the mouth drawn as a common motif in modern day clown makeup. Um, and is this basically not just a depiction of this? Now, this is an old piece of artwork. You know, this is this is antiquity. This is ancient artwork on on plates. You know, and it just felt bizarre to see such a modern depiction of a clown on her chest. So, if you know what this series is about, you'll understand that this this isn't really a coincidence. This is representing something that I think we understand quite well, and that's the Nephilim. But just what Nephilim exactly is this on Athena the goddess's chest and why is it there? So what is on Athena's chest there is what's known as a Gorgonian and um, they were more commonly seen on the Olympian deities Athena and Zeus. Uh, they're said to have both worn it as a protective pendant. It's essentially um, a artistic depiction of the Gorgon. But in Athena's sense, it's said that the head of Medusa, who was a Gorgon, was given to Athena by Perseus as a gift after he chopped his head off. Um, and that's why she wears it on her chest. Uh, but more people, you know, real people, not gods, uh, wore depictions of the Gorgonian on their shields and on their own pendants um, as a form of like mystic protection. Um, so here's some photographic examples of Gorgonians on this. So there it is on a wall as well. Um, in this example of a, of a Gorgon, you know, we see serpents um, kind of intertwined with the imagery of it. So we have these serpents coming out from behind its head, a serpent's belt. And I believe it's trying to say this was a giant of some kind because it's holding a very small man in its hands here. Um, so yeah, we're dealing with Nephilim giants of the past with serpentine-like features, and I believe this Gorgon was one of them. Uh, so we look a bit more into Gorgons on Wikipedia, and it says, you know, in ancient Greece, a Gorgonian, a stone head engraving or drawing of a Gorgon face, often with snakes protruding wildly, and the tongue sticking out between her fangs, frequently was used as an apotropaic symbol and placed on doors, walls, doors, coins, shields, breastplates, and tombstones in the hopes of warding off evil. In this regard, Gargania are similar to the sometimes grotesque faces on Chinese soldiers' shields, and also used generally as an amulet, a protection against the evil eye. Likewise, in Hindu mythology, Kali is often shown with a protruding tongue and snakes around her head. Um, so if we go on here. Cultural depictions. So Gorgons, especially Medusa, have become a common image and symbol in Western culture since their origins in Greek mythology, appearing in art, literature and elsewhere throughout history. Yeah, so the Gorgon is a common image mostly associated now with Medusa. But I do believe it's said that the image of a gorgon actually goes back 6,000 years, bef way before the Greeks. It's actually something that's run through most cultures for a very long time. Um, 
so we got some interesting images here so here is perseus beheading medusa so as she dies she has this large grin on her face you know um very joker like very jester like so here's a depiction of athena with uh the gorgon on her chest again like we saw originally here's a gorgon depicted with a very pale skin and wild red hair and we've heard that as a common motif of most Nephilim of the past. And that is also the same symbology we see of clowns. Pale skin, you know, and red hair. It's funny, you know, you always type in clown into Google and they, they're always evil. <laughs> they always come up with the evil clown. They never just come up with normal ones. Let's just type in clown and see what we get. You know, so here's a red haired clown. Um, pretty pretty basic imagery here it is with its wild hair and that is uh you know a depiction of what i was mentioning earlier this thing so let's keep going uh, they have one on the chest here again again commonly shown to be worn on the chest as a protective symbol here's one on the shield here's another depiction of them with legs and wings and a wild face animalistic like face yeah so here's the giant one again so you know i was looking at the image of this of this gorgon you know and you, you look at examples of a gorgon so let's go on images here and it looks like a boyish childish grinning cheeky little face you know what i mean it's not always just a medusa with the wild hair you know, though that is a common one. It does seem like there's a lot more going on than that quite often. So, you know, this depiction here. I'm not sure you can see it clearly, but it has this wild-eyed look to it, you know, this craziness to it. And what I see here is very similar to the childish face from the Royal Order of the Jesters. You know, here's the signet ring and the character. And the Royal Lord of the Jesters is an offshoot of the Shriners, which is very similar to Freemasonry. It's a secret society. It's all a part of the same thing. And they're a very suspect group of people who, you know, I, I believe have nothing good going on. Uh, but here is another example of this. This face here is very reminiscent of the Gorgon's face. And I think if we go back to the Wikipedia page here for the Gorgon, we can find a vase with a very clear depiction. Here we go. Look at this one. So we'll zoom in on this. Now that does not look dissimilar to me than the Royal Lord of the Jesters logo here. So obviously if the Royal Lord of the Jesters are an offshoot of Freemasonry, we know they are basically demon worshippers, then it can't be surprising that they are depicting a Gorgon on their signet ring and just simply calling it a smiling baby. You know, it's hidden in plain sight. So I think we've found the roots of this now by looking at these Gorgons of the past. But this Gorgon as well, you know, as it was mentioned earlier on the page we were reading, it reminds me too of the Oni demons of um, Japan and Asia. You know, they have these tusks as fangs, a lot like the depictions of the ancient Gorgon. And I think what we're seeing here obviously are similar features that went across many cultures so you look at an Oni demon here and the Oni masks and you find they're very similar to the Gorgon of Greek culture. Here's a good example, a good comparison. So here's a Gorgon, Medusa, and then here's the Oni of Japan with the tusks. I think you'll see the similarities. We're dealing with the same entities here, I think. I think they're a lot older than these myths and the cultures that represented them through their artwork. I think they were beings that really were on the earth at one point. Um, that kind of got deified and mystified as the years went on and then condensed and diluted into modern culture into this imagery. And we don't even know that this is what this is representing now. It's that far removed. But this is where the source of it all is. So, you know, again, I'm looking at this this Gorgon uh, artwork. And I couldn't help but also feel like, you know, it, it's bizarre they have these uh, hybrid chimera creatures next to the Gorgon, you know, and it seems to be a man um, with like a lion's body of some kind with these wings. And that reminds me of the ancient Mesopotamian uh, guardians as well. 
um, very similar in features. You know, a man with an animalistic body and wings. Um, and this predates, you know, Greek culture um, by a few thousand years. This, this is older than we think, you know. And we're talking about goddesses and goddess worship like Athena. And, you know, they had Ishtar. And they had their own goddess worship going on as well. And I think we're just dealing with the same entities with different names um, over vast cultures and over vast periods of time. You know, I think we're just dealing with fallen angels and their offspring and their offspring's offspring. And, you know, it just became a very corrupted, wild world to be living in, filled with these deities and monsters. And the Gorgon is a, is a prime example of this. You know, these things were monstrous and they were a, a bane of mankind. You know, they were a, a major issue. And there's many stories in mythology of them being slain by the half men, half gods, you know, and the heroes of old as they're described in the Bible. So here's another one of the Gorgon, you know, look at this wild image. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this is very similar to the Indian culture of Kali. Is that image here, for example, much different than the image we saw earlier on this vase? I, I don't think it is. I think we're looking at the same demonic entity, a Nephilim of some kind. Um, you know, it's, and Kali was said to be, you know, very a very similar goddess in a way to um, Athena. Um, the negative aspect of, uh, of femininity, you know, the uh, symbol of chaos. You know, and we look at Carly with her many arms and her tongue sticking out and her wild um, nature. You know, she, she has a, a beheaded head in her hand. You know, the tale of Medusa being beheaded. It's all kind of blending together into this strange amalgam. Um, but these headdresses, you know, worn by Tibetan people and people obviously in um, Hindu culture are reminiscent of the wild head of snake hair, as it's described in... Um, mythology of Greece but I don't think it was quite as simple as that you know I think I think these are just ways of describing the the nature of the way they looked um, in an artistic way I'm not sure they really did have snakes for hair um, but they certainly were linked with snakes explicitly because of their reptilian nature you know they had reptilian features um, inherited from their reptilian like parents the fallen angels. Look at this one here. With these uh, winged guardians again, like the same ones we see in the Mesopotamian cultures. So moving on, you know, I was looking into the Gorgons a bit more, a bit of history about them. And we find, you know, they were put onto a lot of coins as well. And these ones specifically have that look of the Royal Order of the Jester um, logo quite, quite a lot more. And, you know, they have this Oni boar tusk uh, Japanese demon look to them as well. And uh, quite a, a clownish wide grin. The tongue is always sticking out similar to that of the Kali as well. And I think what we're seeing here is a particular demon that had a lot of clownish features. I mean, look at this depiction of Kali here. <laughs> you couldn't get more clown-like really, could it? And obviously, like I said, a clown is a, a modern version of what these creatures looked like in the past. A, uh, a very, you know, far removed, diluted version. But when you see this ancient artwork depicting a gorgon on Athena's chest, this is ancient, you know, but it looks just like the way we depict a clown today. I think this may be one of our... Um, Smoking guns, you know, this is this may be one of our major pieces of evidence to show that yes, these creatures that roamed the earth in the past, these abominations, they did have clown features. And this is where we get our modern day depiction of the clown from. Um, you know, looking through Asian cultures, they had snake people in uh, Asia, you know, China and Tibet as well as Japan, and they called them the Nagas. And I think we're seeing another depiction of Medusa, let's call it another depiction of a Gorgon of some kind. When you see these snake beings with these hoods around them of many snakes, like a, you know, 
having hair for for snakes. Um, I don't know if we're just seeing depictions, you know, of energetic principles and supernatural principles manifest physical, which is so it looks like snakes are on their head. I don't I don't know exactly, but this tusk like uh, motif was very common in a lot of um, Eastern uh, dragon masks, you know, and demon masks. And we see the same the same uh, imagery depicted in even Greek depictions of these beings with these tusks you know it goes on and on and you know i was scrolling through and i found this although it's quite funny it's a, a tibetan monks dressed as demons attend the beating ghost festival in beijing and you look at what they're wearing they have these pale skins with deep set red eyes and red features around them with these big wide joker-like grins you know, why depict themselves like this of all things to depict a demon you know and uh, again it's clown like features with the all the multicolors on the clothes as well representing the fractal matrix they're now trapped in um, and obviously they have their version of a demon called the yagwai as well in china now the yagwai was a name of an entity or a, a bad guy in the fallout game so a lot of it comes up here but a yagwai is actually a chinese demon um, a creature of some kind and the, that came in many animalistic forms but here's a depiction of a yagwai here on this uh, piece of artwork and look at it this has the same features similar to uh, the gorgon you know um, and this is obviously quite far away from greece but uh, the gorgon smile with the tongue sticking out and the boar like teeth and these big wide eyes it's not dissimilar from this depiction of a Yagwai here, a Chinese demon. Here's another one. I think we're looking at the same entity, similar to the type of entity we, that Kali is. You know, and I think there was many of them. I don't think there was simply just one entity that looked like this. I think many of the Nephilim had these features. They had many different types of colors of skin, just like many snakes do have many colors of skin. Uh, a white face with red features was very common. And again, this all dilutes to the modern day clown. Um, so a deep dive there into ancient culture, uh, but a bit removed from the more modern examples that we usually look at, but I definitely thought it was worth looking at. So thank you at the Speed of Shadows for sharing that information. I really appreciate it. Um, I will be making more videos soon, guys, getting more into the uh, music industry and um, AI generated images of the Nephilim that I've been working on as well. Um, and I've been going through some more examples that you guys have been sending me, which I found fascinating, which have sent me down many other rabbit holes. But there's just too much to cover, cover in one video here, so I will save it for another time. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel, as always. And if you do want to support this channel, links are down below. So yeah, guys, I'll uh, speak to you soon. And God bless. I want you to get together.